Hi, all of you wonderful scuba divers out there. Welcome to the Scuba Diving Magazine podcast, where I break down the latest scuba diving news and things that have piqued my interest over the previous week. This week, an extreme shift in the weather conditions in Malta led to the emergency services rescuing 17 divers out at sea. The Department of Wildlife and Fish is facing a $30,000 fine following the death of one of their staff members during a routine snorkeling survey. A new nominee is to be inducted into the International Scuba Diving Hall of Fame in recognition of their groundbreaking contributions to the diving world, and this month Paddy has introduced their youngest course director to date at just 21 years old. So the first news story is a Dutch scuba diver has died and 17 other divers uh, had to be rescued after strong winds blew over a dive site in Malta on the 26th of March, making exits from the water problematic. So Kiwa Reef is considered a, a suitable dive site for shore diving for all levels of scuba diver and it's, it's very a popular dive site. Uh, there's a popular wreck out there which is called the, um, uh, the Rosy. It's a British tugboat um, which isn't really great for beginners but it just makes it a, a popular dive site and it's also visited by divers on boats uh, especially from the nearby island of Gozo. In the morning it was relatively normal but later on throughout the day it turned out force six southwesterly winds with gusts of up to force nine had prompted local weather warnings but many divers were already out at the dive site in the early afternoon. Staff from local dive schools told local press that the diving had been normal uh, at Sirkiwa that morning, but from about 12.30 in the afternoon, the waves had started to grow higher, making it difficult for divers to control their exits. When it really started to get dangerous, the police were called after one o'clock in the afternoon, and they responded, along with the Civil Protection Department and the Armed Forces of Malta, to help out. Upon reaching the scene, they found that four divers had managed to make it to safety and launched a search and rescue operation for the 14 others reported missing patrol boats and a military helicopter were used to pick up divers over the next two to three hours. Two or more multinational groups were said to have been caught up in the instance, with at least one dive school group being involved. In Malta, shore diving is also carried out by independent groups of visiting divers, uh, so they knew that there was going to be lots in the water um, and it might not be um, uh, like large organized groups. It could just be one or two divers. Uh, so they did spend that extra time just to make sure they had collected everybody who needed help. Ambulances took four male divers to the nearby hospital in the capital of Valletta, uh, with one, a 45-year-old man from the Netherlands, declared dead on arrival. The other three were reported not to be in critical condition. Police are investigating the incident, and a magistrate has launched an inquiry, um, but it, it is just kind of one of those things. The weather can change during a dive. That's why it's important to like check up on the weather see what is coming ahead of time not just what it's like right now what is it going to be like this afternoon uh because yeah even though you're under the water for about an hour or so it's it's all the time both uh, either ends of it that you've got to uh, to check up on and make sure that it's, it is safe to dive and yeah exits can be tough especially on shore dives if there's a lot of high waves and movement they're going to push you around and that really does suck um so yeah do um uh, yeah do be careful out there the death of a snorkeler in Wind River in the state of Washington has resulted in one state agency finding another thousands of dollars for safety violations and demanding improvements. So on the 13th of September last year, a 31-year-old female biologist working for Washington's Department of Fish and Wildlife died after getting into difficulties in the small Columbia River tributary in the south of the state. She had been taking part in a routine snorkeling survey to assess the numbers of a, a game fish called steelhead um, present in its waters. Skamania County Sheriff's Office responded to a call reporting that the woman had become trapped and search and rescue teams from another nearby county and the sheriff's dive team joined the search but she was already dead by the time they found her. Her death was recorded as accidental. Following an investigation however the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries has identified safety violations on part 
of the Department of Fish and Wildlife presenting its final report on the fatality. Uh, LNI has called for the agency to pay $30,800 penalty within 15 days and also to implement a number of mandatory improvements within a month. So the WD. FW is now required to verify that every employee conducting fieldwork has a personal emergency device and the agency must update both its field communications policy and snorkel procedures manual. It also has to confirm that all staff conducting snorkel surveys receive the necessary training before starting work and update its standards and protocols on equipment required in first aid kits based on the potential hazards to which its staff could be exposed. Quoting, we take these findings seriously and are committing to working with our staff and L and I to make the necessary adjustments for safety. Uh, that was said by the director, Kelly Suzwind. Uh, the department had suspended all snorkeling surveys across the state following the incident and was said to have been working towards addressing the violence violations since it occurred. Steps already have been taken, uh, including requiring personal flotation devices to be used by all staff working in, on, or around the water, including training in their use, and improving the check-in, check-out system for staff working alone or in remote places. Uh, more safety training was also said to have been introduced. Uh, additional safety equipment, including Garmin in-reach satellite communication devices, first aid kits, and personal flotation devices were being provided with a statewide safety evaluation of safety protocols being carried out among all work units. Uh, that kind of reminds me of a, a Reddit story that I um, uh, I read on the, the scuba diving Reddit, and um, it was um, I forget the um, uh, the name somewhere, and I forget was it in Thailand. I think it was Thailand. Um, they they'd been diving, and they they they'd organised a, a a dive trip with this. Um, with this company they took them out on a boat and they said it was a lot like a cattle cart they, they were just crammed in uh, there were three groups of divers and uh, and they were actually in a relatively small group it was just the two of them and a dive master they went on the dive it was a drift dive which they weren't too keen on uh, but they were with one of the um, uh, one of the crew members and towards the end of the dive they um, they surfaced. They put up their DSMB, and the boat kind of ignored them. They were they were waving it around, and uh, still nothing. Um, but they're they're facing uh, the current now. So to be able to swim back, you had to swim into the current. Um, the, um, uh, the the dive guides recommended that they dive down and um, and swim into the current back to the boat, which is just I don't know what they were thinking. And um, when they when they very quickly ran out of their remaining air supply, uh, that they resurfaced and the boat was gone, <sighs> which is just awful. They managed to uh, to swim back to a um, uh, a nearby island, and um, and they found some people there who uh, said right, help them out of the water, uh, help them to I think a uh, another dive centre, um, who managed to radio the boat who was now on the other side of the island. And they didn't even like come and collect them. They made them swim from the shore to the um, the boat, and and like barely a um, an apology. So, um, it's truth, no, it's just any kind of water movement. Uh, yeah, just really try and uh, pay, pay attention um, and make sure you're on the right side of it, uh, especially on snorkel because um, uh, in and around rivers, uh, yeah, it can be incredibly dangerous. On some lighter news, Kids Sea Camp founder Margot Payton is to be inducted into the International Scuba Diving Hall of Fame in recognition of her groundbreaking contributions to the diving world. Her nomination was announced at the Beneath the Sea show in New Jersey at the weekend, and she will be officially inducted into the prestigious group on the 28th of September in Grand Cayman. As a single mother, Margot bravely launched Kids Sea Camp two and a half decades ago, her determination has fostered a global community of young divers and their families. The company began with just seven families on its first dive trip to Curacao and has now expanded to host over 500 families annually, traveling globally for 25 weeks each year. And this impressive growth is a testament to Kids Sea Camp's significant role in promoting diving as a family activity. Margaret Payton is a true innovator. Um, she was the first to bring kids and family to dive resorts at a time where and the idea of family groups in the ocean was pretty much unheard of. Uh, but 
but her dedication to the diving community is reflected in her numerous accolades. Uh, her company has contributed to over 8,000 certified youth and zero diving accidents. A leader, a pioneer, and an inspiration to her peers, she has dedicated her life to children and scuba diving. Margot is a passionate ocean advocate who promotes education, training, and travels throughout her life. Uh, she's also the founder of Ocean Wishes, which is a charity designed to protect, preserve, and educate through training grants, uh, donations, and conservation. It's no real surprise that she's being inducted into the, um, uh, the Scuba Diving Hall of Fame because she's already a Women's Divers Hall of Fame member, uh, a Paddy Ambassador Diver, and a Paddy Elite MSDT instructor. Uh, her exceptional contributions have earned her the Paddy Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, the Paddy Award of Excellence in Training and Education, Beneath the Sea Diver of the Year, and the Dima Hall of Fame Reaching Out Award. Uh, she's also a Wyland Icon nominee, an SSI Platinum Pro Diver, a lifetime member of the Historical Diving Society, uh, the Family Travel Association Person of the Year, and the Legends of the Sea Award recipient. Uh, so yeah, it makes no real surprise to me to, uh, to see her uh, inducted into the International Scuba Diving Hall of Fame. And another female scuba diver is making news this week. Uh, Holly Wakeley has already carved a name for herself in the diving industry, uh, but now at the young age of 21, she has just achieved Paddy Course Director, becoming the youngest female course director in the world. So Holly's introduction to the underwater world started very early, uh, back in 2004, at uh, age just two years old. Her ocean-loving parents, David, uh, who was a dive instructor and a dive doctor, and Catherine, uh, took her to Bermuda Aquarium, where she um, was immediately enthralled by what she saw in the exhibits. Uh, two years later, uh, in 2006, aged four years old, she joined her parents on a family trip to uh, Kids Sea Camp in Curacao and enjoyed snorkeling and, uh, and sassy, which is, um, uh, is like surface supply. For, uh, for young kids. It's, it's kind of scuba, but not quite. Um, and over the next few years, uh, with the family diving company in uh, in various locations around the uh, the Caribbean, uh, spent a lot of time in and around the water. In 2010, at the age of eight, Holly started her Paddy Seal Team journey uh, with her father in Bermuda, and she then continued her seal adventures on subsequent kids' sea camp trips throughout uh, until she was nearing 10 turning 10 years old in 2012 uh, she could then start and do her paddy junior open water diver course in the cayman islands with dive tech and soon after enjoyed a trip to the british virgin islands uh, she continued building up her diving experience across multiple kids sea trips and um, and at the age of 17 in 2020 she became the world's first paddy junior dive master in saint lucia uh, with kids sea camp after beta testing the program for paddy back in saint lucia in 2020 uh, when she was 18 years old um, she upgraded to become a, a full paddy dive master and then she started volunteering at dive bermuda as a dive master before she successfully passed her paddy um, ie uh, instructor examination to become a paddy dive instructor in early 2021 as an instructor she moved to australia uh, to start university and work at sun reef mulu-laba um, on the sunshine coast and the uh, at the same time, she became involved in running Paddy instructor development courses uh, around in, uh, Australia with her partner. And then in March 2024, age 21, she became the youngest female Paddy course director and one of the youngest Paddy course directors full stop uh, in the world at the Paddy CDTC in Malaysia. Holly says, becoming a dive instructor was a dream of mine since I was eight years old in SEAL teams. Uh, I've always loved passing on my knowledge to others. I even consider being a school teacher for a while. Uh, during my own IDC, I took in as much information as I possibly could and was completely in awe of the teaching style of my course director, Lars Bosman, who made everything easy to understand, fun and relevant. When I was teaching recreational divers, I always tried to channel this same energy into my own teaching. 
It was one evening in Bonaire, uh, a year after I'd completed my IDC, that I found myself helping six girls doing their IDC with their assignments. I was teaching dive theory, giving tips for conducting open water and confined water teaching presentations, and coming up with ways to make classroom presentations more interesting. At this point, I realized that I wanted to teach how I wanted to teach uh, to become a PADI course director. To me, being a course director is more than just teaching instructor courses. It means I'm able to inspire other divers of both recreational and professional level to go and pursue what they love within the dive industry. I also think it's very important for those who are younger instructors to see that they should not feel limited by their age and that it is possible to reach top levels of professional diving even if you haven't been teaching or even diving for 20 plus years. Yeah, it's one of those things where we tend to find a, a dip, uh, especially in like professional diving levels, where there's there's relatively limited numbers um, in uh, in like younger age. Uh, even just like learning to dive, it's usually more um, so like older students. You do get some young students, but then as they turn to like 18, 19, they start going off to university and whatnot. They tend to almost forget about scuba diving, which we need to like combat. We need to like get this younger generation into scuba diving um, and in like instructing roles as well because the, the next generation, they, they come along and they, they see all the instructors and they're all like 50 something, um, which they, they can't really relate to. But if they see like a 20 something year old, uh, it just makes it a bit more accessible for them. So uh, yeah, it is nice to see these um, uh, these young younger instructors coming out. But if you're not into teaching uh, and you're more into just improving your diving in general, um, if you're interested in and you're free on the 5th, 6th and 7th of July, um, Intro to Tech is a three-day event arranged at the popular inline uh, dive site of Cape and Ray that is designed to provide you with tri-dives on closed-circuit rebreathers, uh, DPVs, twin sets and side mount, and they have workshops to improve existing skills covering both CCR, twin set, side mount, uh, laying lines, uh, buoyancy, tech, rescue, all sorts of things just to improve skills. Uh, entrance to the site for the event, uh, which runs over the 5th, 6th and 7th of July, is covered in the price and instructors at the event include Olivier Van Overbeek, uh, Mark Powell, Thomas Alcott, uh, Duncan Simpson and Carl Kruger. I'll pop a link down in the description below if you want to if you want to check it out and you can you can kind of establish your own schedule where possible you kind of pick the sessions that you want to attend any skills that you want to build up during the event will be credited towards future accreditations with TDI for example um, so if you do several basic and advanced dry dives on side mount as well as an advanced buoyancy workshop you'll get this credited towards becoming certified uh, this means that your course will be a little bit shorter and it will cost you less because you've already paid for for this section uh, when completing any of these uh, events with the instructors. The event is designed to be like much more like chilled out, uh, just a feel good event, not scary, not difficult. They're, they're not going to be like shouting at you because you don't know um, sort of exactly what they're talking about. Uh, just light hearted, fun, uh, getting you more into more advanced diving, trying out new diving styles, different skills. Uh, the organizers have uh, confirmed on site representation for a bunch of brands. Uh, so you're going to have Santi there, Halcyon, Suex, uh, who are DPVs, uh, Ammonite, Apex, and X Deep. Uh, so they'll probably have some, uh, some equipment and you'll be able to talk with them about which uh, like BCDs and, and dry suits and torches and that kind of stuff. Um, spaces are going fast. Uh, so you do have to register. You can't just turn up on the day. Uh, I'll, I'll pop a, a link in the description below and, and you can fill the form out from there. I don't think I saw anything as far as new equipment this week. Um, so on to some Ask Mark questions. Uh, the first one, DM Nick. 155 uh, says, is Mares Quad CI uh, worth waiting? Uh, on paper, it looks promising for now, but not much information is shared for now, uh, apart from the ones from a few online dive stores. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about the Mares Quad. I'm not even I'm not even sure if it's called the CI or the C. Um, it, it's from, from what I can tell um, on um, uh, uh, retailers websites, it's um, it's like if the Sirius and the Quad had a baby, uh, it's like a large screen um, Sirius. 
basically. So it's a it's a color screen version of the quad computer, uh, air integrated. Um, so if that meets your needs, then yeah, um, there, there are plenty of alternatives out. Uh, I think it's due to be released sometime this month, um, but we're running out of March. Um, and I haven't heard why um, it hasn't been released. Uh, so it might just be shipping issues or something because manufacturers like to get them to like all of their um uh their, their retailers as evenly as possible before they um uh, before they like properly announce it uh but yeah i imagine that's going to be imminent uh i isaiah ccrp I'm going to say, uh, it says, I did my first dry suit course back in February uh, in a four degree lake in the UK. Yeah, I've been there. Uh, I was using a fourth element Hydra that was small anyway, but tighter than a wetsuit for me uh, with thick undergarments on. During the two dives, I was using the dry suit for buoyancy and all the air was going to my feet and I kept becoming inverted. Uh, I was using negatively buoyant fourth element tech fins. Um, uh, so that should have helped, but it uh, it didn't. Yeah, I, of all the like negative fins, I don't think they're the most uh, negative, so I'm not surprised that they didn't help that much. Um, I kept having to do recoveries, and it kind of ruined the idea of dry suit diving, and it wasn't great fun. Yeah, it is it is tough when um, uh, when you start learning to dive a dry suit because it takes a lot of experience to uh, to like get used to it and get that um, like air movement inside of the suit down uh to a, a comfortable like you like you know what you're doing um it's also why it's important that you don't just buy a dry suit and jump in the water because yeah it's it takes it's they're more complicated than a uh, and then a wetsuit basically um my question is uh what do you think caused this um mainly experience um just chill um it'll come to you uh, I wouldn't worry. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. That's that's why you're doing the course to um, uh, to get that kind of practice in, get used to it. Um, and how can I prevent it when I ultimately come to uh, to get my own dry suit? Uh, and one last question: Can you explain the difference between Apollo Apex and Cytex dry suit valves? Um, so to prevent it, yeah, one is is just experience. Basically, there are some ways of um, of helping you. Everything from like ankle weight. Uh, my very first dry suit actually had a, um, a separate section that like wrapped around your ankles that you could slot um, lead ingots into it. So you had like built in ankle weight to keep feet your uh, to keep your feet down, uh, which is pretty cool. You can get uh, like Velcro gaiters, which are quite funky and they, they wrap around your calves and they, they literally help to stop air physically from getting down to your boots or at least below your knees. Um, there are some dry suits. I mean, you talk about Apollo valves. Apollo actually make a, um, a boot valve. So a little dump valve in your, in at least one of your boots. I don't know if you have them in both. I haven't thought about it to be honest. Uh, but yeah, if, if there's too much gas going down to your feet, then it just vents, which is, kind of interesting idea um but yeah most of it just comes down to uh, practice really uh it, it will come um and you will like get used to it uh it just takes more time than a wetsuit wetsuits are pretty standard and you, you jump in no matter which position you're in you're, you're like relatively the same buoyant um so uh, but with a dry suit yeah if that air is shifting around inside of the suit it can shift your center of, uh, of buoyancy so um yeah it's just kind of practice um getting used to your uh, your trim your body position in the water and not adding too much gas to your uh, to your dry suit um if you're um if you're adding more to um like compensate for being overweighted, you've got too much lead in your weight belt, uh, then yeah, you're gonna have more gas roaming around in your suit. Uh, so yeah, I'd do a uh, proper uh, comprehensive weight check just to make sure you're not carrying too much lead. Um, the difference between Apollo, Apex and Cytec valves. Apex and Cytec are, are pretty similar. They each have um, like different ones. You get like high profile and low profile ones, uh, but most of them work in very similar uh, fashions. Chest valve, you're going to have a push button. You push the button on the front and that inflates, usually rotates, uh, usually 360 degrees. Um, some of them 
they will like continue to spin. Others will have like a stopper, so it will rotate 359 degrees, and and then you have to go all the way back. Uh, but yeah, as far as functionality goes, you just push on a, a button on the front, and the um, the shoulder valves you screw them in to um, uh, to like tighten up the valve so that no gas comes out, and then you unscrew it all the way, usually like two or three rotations to make it vent any gas. And if you uh, need to purge gas in an emergency, you can push it in, uh, I call it bopping. Uh, if you bop it, it's, uh, it just opens that valve if you've got a runaway ascent. Um, Apollo valves, slightly different. With the inflate, you have a angled um, inflate button similar to the uh, to the Scuba Pro Power inflator, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, um, where one half of the switch is fixed in place and it's, um, uh, it hinges on that. So you get a bit more control. You can add a little bit of gas or you can add a lot of gas depending on how hard you press that button. Uh, whereas with the Apex and the Cytec, you kind of, you you push the button and that's it. It's just how long you hold down the button for and how much gas goes into your suit. Um, and with the dump valve on your shoulder, instead of rotating the entire thing, you have a uh, like a switch which has uh, three settings, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's like open, semi-open, and then closed, um, which is a bit quicker than having to rotate the uh, the entire thing and if you need to bop it there's a, a valve which is usually pointing downwards so that you can like uh, run your hand up your arm and the first thing that you hit is that valve so in emergency runaway ascent uh, you just take your right hand and just run it up your left arm until you feel resistance uh, and that will start to, uh, to vent as far as functionality goes, that they all do the same thing, really. Um, I've never noticed much of a difference between Apex and Cytec valves. Um, they do have a slightly different uh, bore hole size in um, that has to be cut into the dry suit, so you can't fit an Apex valve to replace a Cytec valve and vice versa. Uh, I'm not sure on uh, the size of Apollo valves. Uh, I don't know them that, um, uh, that well, but... Um, but yeah, functionality, yeah, they both inflate and deflate. Um, and yeah, Apollo also do, I mean, Cytec do a bunch of different uh, valves and things. But yeah, Apollo also make a, um, a boot valve. I'm not sure you can fit it to any boot. Um, but yeah, I, I do remember seeing their, um, uh, their boot valve. It's a bit like a cuff dump, but you fit it to your ankle. Uh, Clean Aero 7804 says, we had a, a little oopsie daisy at the lake. Uh, we put our side mount tanks in the lake when suddenly strong winds came up. Uh, the result was the bottles drifted away. Three were found immediately, but one had gone and we searched for about an hour to find it again, uh, which we luckily we did. Uh, it was, uh, so is there a way to securely attach the tanks to the bank in the water? Um, thanks and best regards from Austria um rope uh usually if I'm um if I'm diving in the lake I usually have a section of rope uh, and I also bring a, a grapnel hook uh which is quite handy um if there is something secure like a, a railing or even like your car um and it, it can be like close enough to the water I will just tie like a bowline uh onto that secure that and then the rope leading into the water if the rope isn't long enough, then yeah, I'll use it like a um, just an, an anchor. Basically, you can pick up these uh, these pretty small like grapnel hooks that fold down as well, so as uh, so they don't take up too much space. And um, and yeah, just take that out with you. Um, pop that into um, uh, into the bottom where you're going to be like setting up. Uh, pay out some line, and uh, and then you can attach some um, uh, like a DSMB. Uh, onto uh, onto the top of the line. Don't have it too taut, just in case. I, I know it's a lake, but just in case the the water level changes or whatever, uh, you don't want it to um, uh, the buoy to like pull the uh, the anchor free, and then it's just floating off with the buoy. Granted, you'll be able to see the DSMB, um, but yeah, you you want that um, sort of anchor to uh, to stay in place, and then you just tie it onto um, uh, onto that line. It's um, that's that's all I would do basically. Uh, so yeah, just just rope but you do want to make sure it doesn't become like an entanglement issue uh, so obviously be uh, be conscious of, of other divers and um, uh, yeah just be responsible with uh, with ropes in the water 
Uh, Chewbacca10 uh, says, any chance you can get your hands on a set of Mars SXS62X regulators for an unboxing and review? Uh, I'm very interested in picking up a complete set. I would love your opinion first. Yeah, I love um, side exhaust second stages. And the uh, the, the SXS, uh, apart from the really hard word to say, um, or the name to uh, to pronounce, um, it's, it's clever because they've taken all of the best features of side exhaust with it being like ambidextrous, doesn't matter which way the hose is coming in and it's very easy to, uh, to donate. They've also put a front purge button on it, which you don't see on, I don't know if I've seen it on any side exhaust second stages from like Poseidon, um, uh, Oceanic or, um, uh, or Hollis or any uh, like modern side exhaust second stages. Uh, usually the, the purge button is on the side which puts a lot of divers off from buying them, but also like using them because, well, hang on, that goes in my mouth, but where's the purge button? And if you're donating to someone who like legitimately doesn't know uh, anything about side exhaust second stages, because there aren't that many out there, um, yeah, that can really confuse them. But Maris have fit a purge button to the front, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll message them. Uh, I just did their um, uh, their puck full computer. I'll see if I can get hold of um, a set of SXS sixty two X regulators. Uh, the sixty two X first stage is a marvel. It's a teeny tiny little um, first stage um, and very neat and tidy. Uh, so yeah, you you whack a uh, side exhaust second stage on it. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, Aiden Fu, uh, Finucane, Finucane uh, 2929 says, I'm trying to get confirmation about the TFX. Uh, there are many differing reports regarding this regulator. Even Atomic is a bit ambiguous. Uh, is the TFX a cold water rated regulator? Uh, I would like a set, but we'll get the T3. If it's not, uh, I have to order a set as I do not have a nearby shop. Um, yes, yeah, and the first stage is very similar um, to the uh, to the T3. Um, so yeah, it's EN250A, as far as I'm aware. And it has a, um, uh, if you if you look around like the middle section of the first stage, there's like a black rubber band. I think it's like silicone rubber, but um, there, there's like a black band around the mid section. And I, I wouldn't do this, but if you lift it up, there's like this white uh, grease on the inside. So that is a like anti-freeze kit. Um, so because it's a piston first stage, uh, if you think about the uh, the Scuba Pro Mark 25, you've got those holes around the middle section and you can see inside, you can see the spring, you can see it's blue. Uh, the blue is their X-Disc coating, which has helped to uh, like anti-freeze it. Um, Atomic have just said, you know what? We're not even going to allow water into that chamber, so they just fill it with this grease, and then they put that um, uh, that band over the top, so the grease doesn't get washed out. And uh, and yeah, that's the uh, the anti freeze kit. Um, you might see a bit of ambiguity because something in my mind says that um, titanium uh, has quite a bad uh, thermal conductivity or a low thermal conductivity. Um, so for like very, very cold water diving, um, I don't think it's the best material. Um, you do want like brass. Um, brass is, uh, is pretty good for, for transferring heat. Um, but yeah, they still pass the, uh, the EN250 um, tests. So yes, they are cold water rated uh, and they'll be as cold water rated as the, um, uh, as the T3 because the first stage is pretty similar. Um, they're both made out of titanium. Um, but yeah, the, yes, it is uh, cold water rated. Uh, uh, replace uh, lithium grease. Uh, White Fury three seven 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 says I've never heard of swivel pins. Oh, sorry, this is on a um, an ask mark about swivel pins. Um, so I really appreciate the advice. You're welcome. Uh, this made me think of another question. 
When I replace or maintain gaskets in my hydro pumps or whatnot, we tend to use a thin layer of white lithium grease to keep it safe from snagging and tearing and also prevent them from drying and cracking. Uh, would that be discouraged in a regulator setup? Uh, so we tend to use a lot of silicone grease uh, or if it's in like a high oxygen like nitrox environment, uh, we use something more like Crytox uh, or Crystalube, um, so it doesn't react with the uh, the high concentration of oxygen. Um, but yeah, um, we tend to do it more on dynamic O-rings than um, than static O-rings, uh, just because static O-rings just kind of sit there and do their job. Uh, but yeah, you usually put a, a thin layer of um, uh, a silicone grease. It helps the um, the O-ring just to seat and um, sit in place without it like twisting and turning and whatnot and yeah especially if it's dynamic yeah it just helps to uh, to lubricate and create a more effective seal uh so yes i've never heard of white lithium grease um i'm sure that might be uh i'm sure that's the thing in uh, in hydro pumps uh but yeah with um uh with scuba diving regulators we tend to use like silicone grease for um for uh, nitrox mixes up to about 40%. Uh, anything above 40% oxygen, we tend to use uh, more like crystal lube or, uh, or crytox. And that's it for another week. Um, so thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, remember, all the links, I'll, uh, I'll pop them down in the description below so you can check them out. And uh, yeah, you can also head over to our website, scubadivermag.com. Check out all the uh, the amazing things that we do over there because we put most of the work into the magazine. Um, and yeah, you can subscribe to it over there. We've got both digital and print versions of the magazine. Um, so yeah, if you fancy a subscription, then head over. Um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all that good social media stuff. Thank you for listening, everybody. And of course, safe diving.